I want to find the domain for this function, and then I want to find the domain for its inverse function. So in order to find the inverse function, what I'm going to do here is you can say this is equal to y also. f of x is y. But in order to find the inverse, I'm going to have to swap x and y, and then I'm going to have to get y by itself again. So to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set x is equal to 5 sine of y plus 2. 2 over here, so I get x minus 2 is equal to 5 sine of y. Divide through by 5, so I'm going to get sine of y is equal to x minus 2 divided by 5. And then I'm going to get y by itself by doing the inverse sine of x minus 2 divided by 5. There you go. y is equal to this. Okay, so the domain. So the domain for the inverse in this case is x can be anything between negative uh, 1 and 1. Which means, in order, so, okay, so to solve this, so I'm going to do x minus 2 over 5 is equal to negative 1, and I'm going to do x minus 2 divided by 5 is equal to 1. So times 5, so let me move this over here, come on. x minus 2 is equal to negative 5 plus 2 plus 2. So in this case, I get x is equal to negative 3 over here times 5. I get x minus 2 is equal to 5 plus 2, and I get x is equal to 7. So this, this lets me know what that does is that determines what values I can put in for x to make sure I stay within my bounds for that. So in this case, uh, for your regular function, it's just going to be negative infinity to infinity because you can plug in whatever you want for the domain because for the regular function, it can just oscillate forever. You can plug in any value of x. Uh, you're limit to, limited on your inverse function. And for your inverse function, it includes negative 3 and 7, so you write your brackets. So it's negative 3 to 7. So these two are your solutions. The top one's your solution for f of x, and your bottom one's your solution for f of negative x, or f inverse of x.